best, easiest, fastest ways to do that is to ferment our food, like our indigenous ancestors did. So our great-great-grandmothers knew how to do this. They knew how to make bone broth. They knew that you were supposed to eat organ meats at least once a week, right? They knew that you didn't make bread with baker's yeast, you made it with a homemade sourdough starter. They knew that you didn't cook with canola oil or with Wesson or with Crisco, you cooked with what? Lard. Lard! Lard and tallow. Well, why would lard be a good thing to cook with? We'll just go over that real quickly because you brought it up. Lard is uh, fat from pigs. Tallow is fat from ruminant animals, so cows, goats, sheep. Um, and the reason it's really good to cook with those fats is because they are concentrated with what? Fat soluble. Fat soluble. What's the big deficiency now everybody's talking about? Oh, yeah, well, there's that. But vitamin D, right? That's the latest thing. Everybody's vitamin D deficient. Well, why are we, why are we vitamin D deficient? Right? We wear sunscreen now. Everybody has to wear sunscreen, right? And we don't, we don't even really go out in, in the middle of the day. Well, our, our ancestors did. They worked all day in the field. They didn't get skin cancer. Why did they get skin cancer? They might have had the right skin for their environment. And why would they have the right skin for their environment? That's a really good point. Why would they? Who said that? Yes. Well, what they were doing is they were following these principles. So when you're eating saturated fat from natural sources and you're getting all this vitamin A and D, what does that protect? Skin. Your skin! It protects your skin. Yeah. In Polynesia, the traditional cooking fat is, is lard because they have wild pigs. That's what they cook with. The traditional cooking fat in Switzerland was tallow because they had cows. But all around the globe, what Dr. Price found is that's what they cooked with when they cooked. And oh, that was the other principle. So thanks for reminding me of that. The final principle is I don't know if you can see this down here, but a certain percentage of the diet raw. That includes both vegetable and animal food. Both. So when we think about raw animal food in our culture, what do we think about? Sushi. Sushi. We all love sushi. Well, in Asia, they definitely love sushi and sashimi, and they eat it every day. What about here? I'm sorry? Steak tartare. Steak tartare. Okay, yeah, that's a European delicacy. Anybody think of anything else? A raw, raw animal dairy food? Raw dairy milk. Thank you! My favorite topic. <laughs> <laughs> raw dairy from pasture cows. Is that just like heresy to say that? How many of you have ever tried raw milk? Oh my gosh! I'm going home now. You guys don't need me. <laughs> Really? Do you drink it on a regular basis? Yeah? Raise your hand if you drink milk every day, raw milk every day. How, how about if you drink it once a week? Once a month? No. Okay. Why? Why not? Because we live in the United States. You live in the United States. I was raised on it. You were raised on it. But I moved here. Wow. Okay. Where did you come from? Australia. So everything's, everything was pasture. Right. There, was no, there were no feedlots. And how about now? They're yeah, getting in there. Yeah, yeah. There's been a revolution in dairy over the 80s, actually. A so revolution that, backwards to yes, the feedlot? Yes, that was small farmers, corporate farms, mm -hmm. cows on merry-go-rounds. Cows on merry-go-rounds, this is new. It was a rhino lactam. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow, so progress has made it to Australia. That's great. Okay, well, why, why is raw dairy preferable to pasteurized dairy. Do you want to venture a guess? Enzymes. Enzymes, yes. What happens when animal food is heated? Destroys, destroys, destroys the enzymes. Number one, alters the fat Tastes better. profile. Tastes better, <laughs> definitely. Tastes better raw. So, so, so why are, go ahead. How do you get rid of the bad bacteria? There are 
are bacteria in everything. In everything. As a matter of fact, we'll get to we'll get to to that question, but but let's start out by talking about um, foodborne illness because that's obviously why we pasteurize milk is the fear of foodborne illness. But I think a lot of people don't know that milk, all dairy products, if you look at a, a bar graph of what causes foodborne illness in the Western world, what you'll find is like up at the top, lettuce and spinach and stuff like that, greens, and then strawberries, and you know you go down the Milk is at the very bottom. The least amount of foodborne illness in this country is caused by milk, which a lot of people don't know. Um, just in general, raw and pasteurized, dairy products are not a real, um, a real big carry of, a carrier of foodborne illness. And that's not just in the pasteurized dairy, that's in the raw dairy as well. But to answer your question, how do you protect yourself from pathogens? You eat dairy products that are raised on pasture. Because when you put cows, when you put cattle in feedlots and you feed them grains that they're not uh, evolved to eat, cows are ruminants, they eat grass. But when you feed them food that they're not uh, accustomed to, they're not you know, evolved to eat, what happens is they get very acidic. Their acid alkaline balance gets really out of whack. And when that happens to cows, just like when that happens to people, it uh, proliferates pathogens in the blood. Indigenous people did, would not have drunk raw milk every day because of the way that they raised their animals. So I think it's really unrealistic and unhealthy for people to drink raw milk every day in this country. It's, it's a seasonal food. You're absolutely right. Milk is a seasonal food. A lot of people don't realize that. But if you think about it, uh, the calves are usually born in spring, and then the milk is, is a spring and summer food. And so indigenous peoples, what they would do is they would drink some milk in the spring, typically not uncultured. Almost all indigenous cultures ate their dairy cultured, so fermented. So uh, kefir, yogurt, cultured butter, cheese, this was the way that they ingested their dairy. And in so doing, because we just talked about with fermentation, you're multiplying the beneficial bacteria and you're minimizing the pathogens in that product. So that's one way to safeguard the milk supply. But just the very fact that indigenous peoples drank milk and ate dairy products from pastured cows did a lot of that protecting up front, on the front end. These animals were healthy. The animals in the feedlots and on the, what do you call them, the merry-go-round? Those animals are sick. And sick animals have pathogens in their milk. They just do. There's no way around that. When they're crowded into, you know, uh, unsanitary, I don't even know what you want to call them. They're like penitentiaries, those big, you know, those big, huge warehouses. And they don't get sun. Well, if they don't get sun, they're definitely not going to get this, right? Because that's what makes that in animals is the sun. So if they're indoors, they're not getting sunshine, so they're not converting uh, those ultraviolet rays into vitamin D on their skin. Pigs are the very most efficient converters of sunshine into vitamin D, and that's why lard is such a, an optimal food. The, the talking about the indigenous people, you know, in this part of the world, in Mexico, people have been using lard forever. That's what they cook with, and they always have. So they knew something we didn't know. You can't get vitamin D from Crisco. You can't get it. It's not there. So anyway, these animals are pastured as opposed to being in confinement feedlots. They're healthy. They're getting sunshine. They're eating what they were designed to eat. It's a whole different picture, entirely different picture. There's one organic dairy in San Diego. Well, it's actually not in San Diego. It's in, in Fresno, but it's called Organic Pastures. Raw dairy. And you can get this milk. You used to be able to get it at Whole Foods. You can't anymore. But you can get it at OB People's Co-op. You can get it at Henry's. Oops. You can get it at Sprouts. You can get it at Jimbo's. And in the history of this dairy, they've never had a single case of food 